and coming to the stream table to a theater near you. <laughs> Nick Nicolaitis. She's, he says, here I go. Okay. This Those is of you are not able to attend and, have, and are watching this uh, competition on live stream, we sure look forward to seeing you in any of the future events. I hope you can make some of them next time. Please, when you do come over, be sure to come up and say hi to Jason and Tom and all the players. And coach. And coach. And coach. <laughs> <laughs> You may not be able to find me because the glare may be quite extreme. It might cause blindness. Nick Nicolaitis, yeah, coaches um, <laughs> follicle challenge. Challenge, follicle challenge. I've been that way for many years. <laughs> Means he's bald. <laughs> I used to go to a barber and pay him ten dollars to sit down and tell me it's over after click, and I really didn't get a chance to relax. So I decided I'll just do it myself and save myself a ton of money. Now, uh, Nick Nicolaitis on our stream table setting up a neat little shot. Um, what it basically is, is uh, Nick is going to set a cue ball. It's uh, going to be exactly two millimeters from an object ball. This is a stroke category. And uh, what he's doing is setting the one ball approximately, uh, I believe it's three balls width. Oh no! Actually, we have the the cue ball and the uh, object ball. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to pull up the information here. Uh, yeah, actually, we have the um, the F balls on the second diamond, which we call the uh, the. Sometimes our diagrams have lettered. Um, Ball is going in the pocket. Yeah, so basically the one ball is going to be the, the ball I'm talking about here. And it's three balls width away from the rail. The cue ball is two millimeters away from the object ball. And it looks like they're frozen, but they're not. Um, Nick's going to impart bottom right onto this cue ball to get it to spin and draw to the foot cushion, hit the side rail, swing the stick out of the way, and pocket the ball in the side pocket. We have a number of swing the gate shots, so this is uh, another one you can add to that uh, to that to that list. Oh, and you made that shot look so beautiful. Good score on his uh, first attempt, Nick. And uh, that's going to be worth uh, ten points for this guy. Fifty-nine points for quick Nick. And he scored that shot we were talking about on table one. Now leads 57 to 8. 57 to 8 on table number one. Get you an uh, update there. Very quickly, it's getting to where it's going to be almost impossible for Gabby to come back on him. Yeah. 57 to 18, table number uh, one, which is our non-stream table. You can't see it. Dr. Q on our stream table, working on that 10-point shot of Nick's choice. And uh, we'd like to th congratulate um, some actually uh, some uh, individuals on some great uh, performances um, in the uh, preliminary rounds. Um, uh, Going to run through our top 12 here, and uh, also our discipline medal winners. Um, Trick and fancy discipline. Andy Siegel won uh, the discipline. What they did is uh, the players went through every one of our uh, our disciplines. We have trick and fancy is our first discipline. Our second discipline is prop and novelty shots, using bridges, chalks, racks. Third discipline is draw. Fourth discipline, follow. Fifth discipline, bank kick. Sixth discipline is our stroke category. Seventh is jump. and Eighth is masse. What we do is in the preliminary rounds, based on these scores, we award discipline medals to all the players. Uh, well, not all the players. The players that score the best in each one of those. Um, and so... Uh, uh, we've got some awards that uh, will be given on our awards presentation. Trick and Fancy, Prop and Novelty, and Follow all go to our uh, number one player in the world, Andy Siegel, who is actually on our non-stream table. He scored uh, 39 in Trick and Fancy, 36 in Prop and Novelty, 
and uh, 37 in the follow category. Now, just a little note about the prop and novelty category here in the tournament. Uh, Andy and uh, Nick actually score the same amount of points. Um, but what we do is we actually have a, some criteria for breaking a tie. Uh, first of all, we go to first attempts. Uh, they have the same amount of first attempts, three out of the five shots in that category. They each had one second attempt. But um, Andy had actually more points on first attempts with uh, 23. That's to they yeah, that's how they broke the tie, to Nick's 21. So uh, We have a total of 40 points that could be scored in a perfect round. Right, so we've got eight different disciplines, 40 points each discipline, so you could, you know, theoretically score uh, 40 times 8. Would be 320. 320. So, theoretically, you could score 320. Andy scored, do you remember? Mm, Andy was, what, 200 and... 200 and something. I don't know what the exact total was. What did Jamie Gray score? Yeah. You didn't yeah. know there was going to be a quiz, did you? No, I didn't know. I wasn't ready for this quiz. 250 points. 250 for Jamie. Yeah. and uh, He actually was leading, wasn't he not? He was. He was leading the whole score. Yeah, I scored but, uh, for Andy, who second would put yeah. the less on that. The thing is, though, I yeah, think. the thing is, Andy, Andy though, uh, uh, was uh, right on his heels, and uh, Jamie Gray uh, met a whirlwind in the form of uh, Tom Rossman, mm -hmm. and unfortunately ended uh, Jamie's tournament this week. I mean, he's had a great, great run of back-to-back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back -to -back tournaments. Um, he just won one a few weeks ago, too. Oh, yeah, I know. Just unreal. Uh, draw category. Uh, Dave Nangle, actually uh, a uh, three-time draw champion, I believe, for the Masters. I think it is. Right. Unbelievable. 38 points. Mm -hmm. The bank kick category, Bruce Bartholet. Um, just never really got things going this weekend, but uh, able to swing swing in and pick up that uh, bank kick category for 36 points. Tom stroke. And made the shot. In the stroke category, Jamie yeah. scored 36 points, and so he's got a discipline medal. And uh, Tom uh, scores on his uh, attempt out there. So we'll get you updated on the score there. Um, Masse was uh, my first round opponent. Gilbert Olson. So Mass, you know, Gilbert's got a Mass A medal. Got a Mass A medal. Thought Tom had made the shot, but I think the ball that he whipped down in the corner and failed to go, but he got the draw back and made the ball over in the side. Now you see he's using a Dr. Popper cue on this shot. Is he? This is a swing the gate shot. And uh, I think Tom watched my match against Nick earlier. Um, even though I wasn't able to connect on the shot, um, I had a really good idea, at least in my mind. That cue doesn't weigh hardly anything. It weighs four ounces. Okay. That's Dr. Popper. Yep. And that, that uh, jump cue out there is actually one that was made by uh, our own uh, Mark Dimmick. Mm -hmm. Out of Oklahoma City. Yep. They call him Dr. Popper. Uh, one of uh, three or four doctors in the field this weekend. Um Mark ha Mark has this uh, cue out there. This Dr. Popper actually jumped from, well, I don't know, it looks like you're jumping as close to almost frozen to the ball. And you can clear the ball and uh, do some really neat things with that uh, jump him, cue. I've seen him jump. It looked like there was less right. than a millimeter distance. I think those cues only weigh about four ounces, four if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, what's going to happen is Tom with uh, uh, that Dr. Popper um, is able to actually swing that cue out a little bit easier than a heavier jump cue. And I think Tom actually capitalized that on that on an early match against Jamie Gray. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, this is worth 10 points if Tom makes it uh, on a first attempt. And so we'll see uh, see what's in the cards for him. We do have, talking about that Dr. Popper stick, we have one stick or one shot that was developed strictly to be for that Dr. Popper. Oh, that, uh, the yeah. The that jumps over and banks and uh, comes back. We've got a piece. This shot, um, with any other jump cue, is going to be pretty difficult. Um, there's a few out there in the market that could help uh, and actually shoot that shot. Uh, McDermott makes a nice little jump cue, but, uh, um, and uh, McDermott actually was uh, instrumental in uh, um, marketing um, Mark's jump cue. And what it actually the shot is, we have a roll of five balls that's only two balls width from the rail. 
and the cue ball is actually in that area. Throws through the rail. We have a ball actually in the side pocket on the same side of the table. Players have to jump the cue ball over this roll of five balls. They're, they're less than a ball away from this thing. Mm -hmm. So they got to jump over the roll of five balls, kick that cue ball one rail and pocket a ball in the side pocket. Not easy to do. Not easy to do. Very difficult. Tom's got a chance here. All right, and Tom got the score on it this time. There he goes. Good score on our stream table. Sure glad he didn't get too excited this time. Yeah, settle down, Tom. You know, you should you should really learn to, you know, let it out. <clears throat> we'll give him we'll give him eight points. You can dance to it. <laughs> Now it's 58 to 59 in favor of Nick Nicolaitis. 58 We're looking to at 57 50 to 18 still, and Andy 58 over, over, uh, Gabby for over on Dr. Q. Choose a shot. Okay. Well, uh, we're waiting for time to choose a shot. We're going to run down your top 12 players from the preliminary rounds. Um, in first place, uh, we had Jamie Gray uh, coming out of the gate. In uh, second place, Andy Siegel. Third place, Gabby Vashoyu. Fourth place, Nick Nicolaitis. Fifth place, Gil Olson. Sixth place, Dave Nangle. Seventh, Abram Diaz. Eighth place, Tom Rossman. Ninth place, Steve Markle. Eighteen-year-old phenom. Mm -hmm. And this guy started in artistic poem. He's only 16 years old. Isn't that incredible? Uh, that's, I look for him to be one of the top players the time he reaches the age of 21. Yeah. Tenth position, Paul Dano in the preliminary rounds. Eleventh position, Tom Kinzel. And uh, that in 12th place? <laughs> guy sneaking in at the last minute. Uh, Michigan kid. Oh, you're missing it. Oh, that's you, Jason. Yep. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, One thing you're missing about Steve, it's age 18. Too tall, Abram Diaz is only 23. Young, young kids are coming in and taking over. And I would like to send a shout-out on the stream to uh, Chris Woodrum, also known as Tricky Shout. I thought you would say Tricky Shout. <laughs> <laughs> Chris was on last night watching and saying hi to everybody. Chris, are you out there today? He's out there. It's a tricky shot right there. Oh, there you go. How you doing there, Chris? And, uh, Chris is a good, uh, well, actually, in my opinion, one of the uh, big stroke uh, players in the game. He can actually stroke a ball with the best of them. Big draw stroke, uh, mass A. I first met Chris when I was up at one of the uh, APA events. Yeah. The Nationals up in August a couple, two, three years ago. Got to know him real well. And look forward to seeing him every year. He's always a lot of fun, very helpful. <laughs> Good sense of humor, too. Oh, he has a he didn't mind me. He didn't mind me making fun of an accent. <laughs> so. He kind of speaks with an accent of some sort. I'm not sure. You can't sound funny. He does. Just kidding. Good thing we don't have any accents. <laughs> I've got this strange California accent. You're right. Maybe just to touch of Oki. California accent. All right, what do we got here that Tom's doing? To setting up. And uh, players, you'll you'll see the nice little part in our chairman's hair. On the stream camera, <laughs> Stacy Mendrick is actually the only uh, woman that shoots actually in our pro events, and she's also called the first lady of trick shots. That applause was for her and helping out. Um, um, Heel Billy. Shot Tom's working on is actually a stroke shot. We call it snap, crackle, pop, jump, nip, draw. Tom's gonna hit the cue ball into the uh, ball that's. Out for the, the eight ball and nip draw this with a tremendous amount of spin and nurse the nine ball into the pocket. 
Good attempt there for Tom Rossman. And I uh, get a point total for you. I believe that's a six-point shot, if I'm not mistaken. In the stroke category. 58 to 59 is the score at the moment. Nope. Wait a minute, let me rephrase that. Six-point shot. Going to be 64 points for Tom Rossman. There we go. And Nick Nikolai is moving to the table to take his hand at this uh, little jump-nip draw shot. And this match is a very, very close match going head-to-head. -head. Mm, this doesn't surprise me one bit. And Tom actually, um, Tom bless his heart, he, he puts, him, puts himself in situations, you know, uh, just such a great ambassador to the sport. You know, he's, he's, he's stretched so, so thin at these events between the APA booth and, um, you know, the other things that are going on. Um, Tom comes in eighth place in the preliminary rounds. And look, he's shooting for uh, one of the spots in the finals. That's right. So We've seen him many, many, many times in many tournaments. He walks in the door, walks over, has to shoot, shot, take off, go down, put on a quick show, shoot for someone else, comes back up. He has maybe two or three minutes to get. Hey, Gabby. A little applause over there for Gabby. You made a great shot. It's <laughs> There comes Gabby running around making a great shot over off the table one. Little excitement. He's picking up some of Tom Rossman's excitement. <laughs> Got him going now. <laughs> Good thing we didn't have too much excitement over there with Gabby. Gabby, you should really work on overcoming your shyness. First all step right. with quick nick, six to points. Bother, uh, nick at all with all the screaming and yelling. He just steps up, makes a shot. 65 for Nick Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> One point match here on table number two, the stream. 65 to 64 in favor of Nick Nicholas. <laughs> Tom's hanging right there just waiting for Nick to, to make one mistake. That's all he needs. <laughs> I venture to say this is going to go down to a one-point match between the two. Did Gabby make that shot, or is he just excited for running around? I think he just needed a little exercise. He wanted to go out and stretch, but he didn't have a reason, so he made it made the shot to give him a reason to go do that. Oh, can you give yeah. me a score over there? Tell yeah. me how, how, many, how much stuff he's got. He's up to 25 now for Gabby. And wait till the scorekeeper steps out of the road, and it's 57 for Andy. Yep. All set. We're all updated here. On our stream table, we've got nothing going on at the point. Maybe we <laughs> ought to give Gabby uh, another 20 points for running around with all the excitement. <laughs> Intimidator iShaft Series incorporates a full-length carbon fiber core that results in the most radical, consistent shaft on the market. From our ball-breaking big boy shaft to the surgical precise I3 shaft. McDermott Cube. Hardcore performance for hardcore players. Since 1975, McDermott Q has consistently raised the performance standards for what billiard players expect from a high-performance cue. Introducing the highest evolution in shaft technology. One-handed jump shot here on table number two, our stream table. Uh, the cluster of balls is in uh, is actually two diamonds away uh, between the second and third rail. Yeah, whatever. Total seven points for that. Tom makes it for you to explain it. <laughs> well, 
Now you see Nick coming up, you can go ahead and make the explanation before Nick shoots the shot. Oh, Nick's pretty quick, too. <laughs> and maybe that's why they call him quick Nick. Okay, better get this in. 65 points is what Nick has currently. This is a one-handed spot, or a one-handed jacked up jump shot. Key balls in the one-by-one one diamond area down by the corner pocket. He's attempting to jump the key ball over six uh, balls and pack the ball in the corner pocket. Hey. Is that fast enough? That's fast enough. Yep. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> Sally sells seashells. Okay. And he makes that shot rather quickly. Also seven points. Just can't seem to shake that one point advantage that he has. Tom's at 71, and, uh, you know, we've got a uh, quick nick at 72. Now, I have to explain that shot there, Jason. It might take me just a little bit longer to do the explanation. <laughs> Wake up, Jason. I laugh when it's funny. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Gabby, our Romanian counterpart. <laughs> so we had a great time. I've had a great time with uh, Gabby oh, yeah. over there with myself yeah. and Tucson and Gabby. And we <laughs> yeah, just all had a lot of laughs in the same. Yeah, place. you guys are in the same yeah. hotel, aren't you? Yeah. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh. Gabby's I like, could tell some stories, but I no. can't say them over to this live stream today. They're a lot of fun. Gabby could be a Romanian Gallagher, I think. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> he had a long time getting here, too. Yeah, Romania. He took uh, three hour total three hour flights to take the Atlantic flight, which was eight and a half hours. Then he had to take a bus for an hour, and then he jumped the train for two hours, and then he jumped. The Caught a ride for another five and a half hours just to get here. Mm -hmm. And that was just through Romania. <laughs> <laughs> he says on his return trip, he's going to go to New York. He doesn't know how he's going to get there or where he's going to stay. But he says he's going on his return trip. There might be some guys in New York who might uh, look for a room. So if you happen to see someone walking along the road. With pool sticks with in pool hand. sticks in hand. And sponsor patches on there their shirt. It might be him trying to go on back to New York to catch a flag. If you do, be sure and give him a little lift. Can anybody give Gabby a ride? <laughs> <laughs> the answer would be no. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, we're doing a stacker shot. That's a neat little, uh, little actually, a, a, yeah, it's a neat shot, actually, for Nick to point, pick at this point. Gordon Hedge is walking by our booth with food. Ten-point shot. Come hold him on. down, coach. I'll get Here, it. No, I'll just hold the Let me hold that for you, Gordon. Okay, Nick, what he's going to do is uh, hit that combination, start the uh, object ball towards the corner pocket. While it's rolling, he's going to jump the cue ball over the rolling object ball and... Uh, uh, get the eight out of the way. The nine will drop to the table. And the uh, one ball that he hit the first uh, will actually pocket the nine ball. Now, a little funny story about this uh, stacking eight ball. I had a young gentleman, a young little boy, actually at one of my trick shot shows. Mm -hmm. And I have a stacking eight ball. Well, I didn't really explain it or say much of anything. You know, I just kind of stacked the eight ball and put another ball on top of it hit the shot and went out with my show. I didn't really tell anybody. And, you know, just, you know, what what was the deal with the stack and eight ball? And this little guy, he could have been more than, oh, man, eight or nine years old. Yeah, maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, younger than that. Decided that he was going to stack two balls on top of each other. Well, I didn't see him for about a half hour. 
He's still over there oh, stacking right. balls. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my gosh. I felt so bad. I had a spare stacking ball in my bag. You know, you know where that went. Oh, yeah, better. You yeah, that little, that little <laughs> kid got a, got a stacking ball to play with. <laughs> so found out the secret. I'm sure he had fun <laughs> showing his friends there and making them try to figure out how to stack the ball. Quick Nick, Nick Nicolaitis. Oh, got under collision. Third attempt. The hard thing about this shot actually is, is you really can't control, um, you know, really precisely what that cue ball is going to do um, when it comes out of that corner pocket, you know, after it pockets that eight ball. So, you know, if, if it happens to come out and carry him and hit that uh, one ball, you know, you're in trouble. Too many variables on a shot for me to shoot. I don't know. But uh, if I'm forced to shoot it, my opponent picks it, uh, it might be a good shot in a match like this. You can do the shot perfectly and still not make it because of that, where that cue ball comes after it goes down there. All right, there we go. <laughs> good attempt for a quick nick there. Yeah. We got and that was his... Third attempt worth eight points for Nick. And uh, his score moves up to 80. 57 to 25. Jason over on the other table still Andy leading the lead. 71 to 78 at the moment. On the table we're watching on live stream. Well, as long as Tom makes this on his first two, one of the first two attempts, he'll actually either be uh, in the lead or tied with... Uh, with Nick, so uh, Nick opened the door a little bit. This might be the opportunity Tom's been waiting on. Tom doesn't like that end of the table. Looks like he's going to it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Moving on to the Mass A category. After Tom shoots the shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be a good time to wait until we shoot the shot before we move on. Yeah, I'm moving. <laughs> it's getting late now. I'm tired. Tar is tired. It's been a long, long week and weekend for all the players. Like myself, I arrived here last Tuesday night. We all started getting together Wednesday night down here. Changing time zones, changing areas for a lot of us, and still trying to get our bodies adjusted. Staying up till 2, 3 in the morning, and getting back up at 7 or 8. Bodies trying to adjust. You get very tired by the end of the week, which is where Jason and myself and a lot of the players are. Mm, so you hear me snoring. <laughs> We're just resting the eyes for a minute. Rest the eyes. <laughs> I actually started, was talking last night, and it seemed like I started to drift off right in the middle of my conversation and caught myself and realized just how tired I was. Probably around 12, 12.30 last night. We actually, for those out there not, not aware, we actually had matches all the way up to approximately 2 o'clock this morning before we got off live stream. Mm -hmm. Kind of crammed uh, three tables worth of action into two tables for this weekend. So um. we, we got out of here a little after 2 o'clock, went, went down, got something to eat. Didn't get into our hotel rooms till after three. Mm -hmm. Back up this morning, about eight o'clock this morning. So. Unreal. But we enjoy all this competition, the camaraderie with everybody, performing our shots in front of a crowd. Here goes Tom. Shoots the shot and jumps off the reel on his jump shot, on his first attempt. Now, if he shoots this and gets nine points, I believe he will be in a dead tie. Am I not correct on that, Jason? That's correct. 
Uh, Nick Nicolai stands currently 80 points. Dr. Q at 71. So we'll see if uh, Tom can close up the gap on his second attempt here on this uh, pretty difficult 10-point jump shot. Now, I don't know how many out there um, knew about or know about the format as it stands right now. Players right now are working through um, their picks um, in the playoff rounds. And what happens is, is uh, we've got eight different disciplines, and we alternate who picks first in each discipline. Player one will pick first, let's say, in discipline number one. Player two will pick first in discipline number two. And then we'll, we'll move on. Tom failed his second attempt. Definitely going to need to focus on this to get his third attempt. Mm -hmm. I think you see Tom taking a little more time on this. He gets mm -hmm. his full focus going. Executing his third attempt. I'm about to fall asleep here, guys. Oh, no score for Tom Rosser. Looks like Nick's expanded the gap just a little bit. Now, Tom currently stands at 71, while Nick stands at 80. And so Quick and Nick coming to the table. <clears throat> Over on table one, Jason, score is still the same. 57, mm -hmm. 25 favor, Randy over Gabby. And we'll, ooh, great shot. This is a jump out of the mass, eh? Or jump out of the rack shot. Just going to be hearing Jason here for the next five minutes or so. So if you hear a little noise, that buzzing, that might be him taking a nap. And I'm going to be leaving you for about five, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Should have got my. All right, here we go. Nick Nicolaitis, no score in his first attempt. This is uh, my favorite Massey shot. Hit the cue ball down into the table. <laughs> That's part of the favorite. And then jumping the cue ball out. And then where it turns around, it goes along the rail, pockets the ball in the corner. Great shot for Nick Nicolaitis. Second attempt, good dump for nine points. I'm looking at the jump out of the Massey, or a jump out of the rack Massey.
would like to send a congratulations out to Andy Siegel on table number one. Uh, it is mathematically impossible for uh, Gabby to catch up with uh, Andy Siegel. And so the uh, final score on table number one, 64 to 25, in favor of the Magic Man. He'll be moving on. Okay, how are we doing, guys? I just got back myself. Well, I stayed awake for a little while. <laughs> I don't know everyone missed me. Didn't throw anything yet. I hope you guys were able to hang through all that buzzing. That was eighty a to rest. Yeah. Jason was good. Eighty to seventy one here on the stream table. Tom coming up on his second attempt on the jump mass thing. I think he has the judge jumping a little bit himself. <laughs> Second attempt coming up for Tom Rossman. Affectionately known as Dr. Q. At this event this weekend, we have Dr. Q, Dr. Q Ball, Dr. Popper, Dr. Chin. Anybody else? Uh, not that I can think of. We do have plenty of doctors in the house. You need some help. If someone hurts themselves, we'll be all right. <laughs> we need a psychiatrist is what we need. <laughs> all these guys with identi identity problems trying to think they're doctors. That's it. The only actual doctor is Dr. Chin. Tim Chin, we'd like to send a congratulations out to him. He's got a Ph.D. Right. in material science engineering, whatever the heck that means. Here we go, Tom. He's out of the rack. And Whoa. He went the wrong direction. Wrong way. <laughs> All right, Tom comes over and gets the ball in. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, no score on his uh, mass A's there. Great job. Great Still job. standing at 71 points. And uh, Nick. Nick's total score currently is 86 points. Sorry for missing the update there for you. 86 to 71 at the moment. Shot Tom's going to come up with here. <laughs> and on our stream table there, we've got uh, a couple of people saying uh, congratulations to Mr. Siegel, including uh, Mrs. Siegel, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angie out there, and uh, we've got uh, Ava, actually Nick Nicolaitis' wife, uh, sending congratulations to... Um, Mrs. Siegel for her husband. <laughs> so uh, they're going to move on, uh, or at least uh, Andy is currently moving on to the tournament, and we'll see um, who's going to join him in the finals. So congratulations to Andy Siegel, second place after the preliminary rounds. And uh, we are uh, moving on right now. And we're going to see how many shots we have left here in uh, just a second here for you. Just uh, give me a second. I'll get an update done for you. Try and get that for you just a second here. This shot here that is attempting the seven-point shot. This is a neat little shot. It's actually, um, what this, you can actually play this in a game of nine balls. It's a neat thing. Um, the cue ball um, could be hit down to pocket of one ball and then zip down the rail to pocket the nine. So we are uh, looking at how many shots are left. Um, let's check that. And I've got my. Yeah. All right, there you wow. go. Wow. Score. Yeah, we're in Massey right now. 
and then we have uh, two more picks for each player. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, Turkey shot here on the website. But... And Tom, uh, that shot. Jason, we have two each. Right. What? Left. Score. Six. Tom stands at 77 points. And that uh, is to Nick's 86. So, got a match here, guys. Wow. That's a powerful mass. They jumped over and off the table. Um, jump was uh, last discipline, wasn't it? Jump, I'm sorry. Jump was last discipline, right? Yeah, we're in the Mass Jump A. Jump last, we're in the Mass A. Go tell Nick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, Nick's actually good. got it. He's still hanging back in the jump there yeah. instead of the Mass A. Nick's got one of the, one of the more powerful Mass A strokes here at the field. So. And, he comes and you can see there, shot. for seven shot. points, Six points. Nick Nicolaitis, seven points. Breaking that 90 mark, 93 yeah, points. 92, I believe. Yeah, 92 points. See my math works. 86 and 6, 92. Mm -hmm. What's California math? Psh, same as Michigan math. Okay. 92 points for Nick Nicolaitis. There it is, 77 to 92. So now what? Oh, I got you some more shots. Disciplines. We have what now? Two uh, choice of two shots left. They Correct. Can take them from anywhere, but they cannot take any choice of any shot they shot already. And also, um, just a little bit of point of information: in this, in these last uh, shots, the players can't choose two. Well, they get to choose two shots, you know, here in the last four, and they can't choose both shots from the same discipline. One of each. So I tried. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, I tried to t pick two stroke shots against Gill in our match, and uh, uh, luckily I still had the jump mass A to go to for my last shot. So basically, what we're looking at too is as they went through, they made two choices from each discipline. Right. And if they chose any of the tough shots, the higher valued shots, they could be almost be totally eliminated and not have but one choice left. Well, now, now they wouldn't have to choose. Wouldn't have to, but I'm saying if they're really trying to outpoint their. Right, uh, right, exactly. Choice. You know, so there's there's only really. You know, looking at this, um, with 15 shots in each discipline, which is what we've got, you know, in our program, so we've got 13 shots in each discipline they can choose from. And the uh, person who's trailing is have to make a choice of a high point shot and it may be uh, one that he's not as quite sells at and able to make it make a tougher shot whereas the one that's leading can choose a lower shot that it's easier to make. Just keep scoring. Just keep scoring is the main thing in these matches. My match against um my match actually against Gill, um I don't think I missed any of my shots and that's what kept me in it. Um, my match against Nick, I made all my shots. Um, unfortunately, didn't seem to connect on, on all of his. So uh, that's uh, that's a difference between uh, making the playoffs and moving on and not. So. This this is uh, this was uh, Tom's favorite shot until 2008. It's his second favorite shot now. This is actually a five reel kick cut shot. Um, and uh, Jamie Gray actually beat Tom on this shot to win the uh, the world championships uh, currently. He's current world champion uh, chip uh, holder. What Tom's going to do is 
It's a kick shot. He's going to kick the cue ball. One, two, three, four. I think one, two, three, four, five reels. And cut the eight in the corner. So we'll see what happens. Nine point shot. Nine point shot coming up. First attempt for Tom on the way. Got a chance. Oh, man. Right contact point, right aim point, and it just came up a little, little too short on that. There are many factors on this shot. <sighs> Unbelievable. It is just so hard. That's why it's a nine-point shot. I, on some tables, it shoots almost like 11, because um, some tables you actually have to put inside English on this ball. And uh, speaking of inside English, we'd like to thank them for helping us get the stream going this weekend, as well as McDermott Cues. Second attempt coming up for Tom Rossman. Did he get it this time? Oh, no. Nope. Third attempt coming up for Dr. Q. Uh, Dr. Q is one of the the better bank artists in in uh, the billiard industry. He actually has a uh, something he invented a long time ago called Banks Kicks and Tricks. Banks Tricks and Kicks. Tricks, kicks, and banks. Here we go. Coming at the third time. Here he comes. All right. He got it on the third attempt. That gives him seven points there. Great shot. Ladies and gentlemen, we ain't done yet. 92 for quick Nick, Nick, Nicolaitis. Easy for me to say. Dr. Q at 84 points. This will be anybody's game. Yep. We shoot that shot in some of our tournaments where they put a what we call cheater ball next to ball there to help it, and it is still a very difficult. Oh, game. it's it's unbelievable. This is one I, I think is what should be a much higher scoring shot because of the difficulty. Yep. So many factors involved. Tom in hits it. Doesn't look like it's too much of a problem. <laughs> Once again, we'd like to thank uh, well. Uh, Nick's getting everything set up and looking at his notes. We'd like to thank our sponsors for the, the stream and allowing us to come to you uh, actually live and uh, in Memorex later on on uh, stream. McDermott Cues. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, stop looking at it. You missed it. McDermott Cues, Fiddle Six Billiard Cafe out of North Canton, Ohio. Uh, the pro down there is uh, Chris Sutter, so uh, stop in and say hi. Zooter. I'm sorry, Chris. Chris Zuter, and uh, stop in and say hi to him. One Shot Billiards out of New Jersey, and uh, BillyardCommunity.com. Uh, BillyardCommunity.com is kind of like Facebook for billiards. Coming down, coming down. What's, this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's right. this? Poof! It looks like he got it on his second attempt. What a shot. Poof! Eight points, sir. First person we've had break 100 in the match. That's not good. It's <laughs> not good for Tom. He'll come back. Moving right along, people. We have a Nick now is making the choice. Six hundred. After the conclusion of this match, uh, we're gonna be proceeding right with the finals. We're just gonna do some little reconfiguration up here and then uh, we're gonna go right into the finals. Uh, hope you guys all stick around for that. Sixteen point shot. Sixteen points, uh Separate our two uh, players here. And we are down to uh, two shots. Two shots left. Now, let me let me uh, actually uh, set the stage for you here. Nick is at uh, 100. Tom is at 84. And what, what um, Tom needs to happen, um, Nick needs to miss every one of his attempts for Tom to have uh, a chance at catching him right now. If Nick makes any one of his attempts, the match is over. He can choose a six-point shot and hit it on the third attempt and still get And, still, and, still, win and still, it's it's mathematically impossible for time to catch him at that Which point. Which shot is Nick taking? Uh, this is a uh, little strategy here employed by Nick Nicolaitis. Very makeable shot. Mm-hmm.
case. Yep. Quickly resets, hits the two balls frozen down there, and the two balls frozen was going to four to one ball. I predict he's going to make this in the first attempt. There it is. Congratulations to Nick Nicolaitis. Nicolaitis. First attempt for six points. Shooting the shot. First attempt coming up for Tom Rossman. Fence some uh, false information, excuse me. There is three shots left in the match. Tom, no score on that attempt. <coughs> Second attempt worth five. You don't have to excuse me for the uh, the error there. Tom seeing if he can make that uh, third ball there. Um, difficult shot of these tight pocket diamonds. <laughs> Trying to put two or three balls at a time in some of these tight pockets. But uh, really think to th really have to thank Diamond for uh, you know helping us out by providing the tables for uh, you know the Billiards Expo this weekend. Looks good. Could have looked better. Third attempt coming up for Tom Rossman. This will be worth four points. No score for Dr. Q. And we'd like to send uh, congratulations out to Nick Nicolaitis. Uh, moving on to our finals. Score 106 for Nick Nicolaitis to uh, Dr. Q's 84. Uh, so uh, we have the top, uh, top players in the finals. And basically you have your second seed and your fourth seed from the preliminary rounds fighting their way through... Uh, the playoffs to uh, meet each other in the finals. We're going to join you in just a few minutes. So we're going to uh, go off stream for a few minutes and uh, get uh, everything refreshed as far as our computers. And uh, hopefully we'll have no uh, no issues and we'll be able to bring you nonstop action from the 2010 Super Billiards Expo and the Artistic Masters event. So uh, stay tuned. Also get us refreshed as well. 